What's up, y'all? Welcome to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I'm your boy, Charlie Wilson, man. Now, you know, with this podcast, I sit down with some of the baddest comics from all over the world, and they tell me a funny story from some shit they've been through. I don't know. <laughs> now, before I go any further, make sure you take a minute to subscribe. You better subscribe. Stop just watching our stuff without subscribing. That's the toll. So subscribe real quick, and we're going to get the show cracking, man. We got a dope special guest. I love her. She's dope. She's funny. Uh, and was just on America's Got Talent. Y'all, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Susan Thompson. Hey. Ah! How you doing? Hey, boo. <laughs> How you now, doing? Now, I know you got a little story for me. Oh, I got So stories. Susan Thompson, please, do tell. <laughs> do tell, do tell. Let's see. Uh, probably one of the best ones I have. I just started touring. Mm. Um, I was actually heading up with a friend of mine to Fort Nelson. So if you're in Vancouver, British Columbia, that's like another four hour flight. Damn. All in Canada. All in Canada. Another Mm -hmm. four hour flight and then another four hour drive on top of that. Wow. So it's a snowy area. So I remember driving through this area. First thing we get off the plane, I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, you can't make me get out of this plane. I'm not getting out of this plane. It's freezing out here. Mm. I remember getting to the car and I remember my hands were already frozen. I'm like, this is going to suck. And it ended up being one of the best car rides I think I've ever been on. And we get to the venue, we, we're all ready for the night and we get there and uh, we're standing out front. My uh, headliner was having a smoke out front. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy just decides to come out front and start urinating in the front of the property. Whoa. And it was it was just so random. We're like, what are you doing? He's like, you know, it's Fort Nelson. We're like, Fort Nelson, have some pride, man. Right. This is your home. <laughs> So I remember he came over after and he's like, oh, I've seen your picture on the poster. And he went to put his hand out Damn. to shake my hand. Wow. And the headliner just slaps his hand away. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Yeah. So I just wanted to say hello to her. He says, this is a woman standing here, a lady. You just finished urinating out front right. and you want to shake her hand. Why don't you go wash your hands first? Yeah. So he decided to go up one side of me and down the other. And he was going to beat us up after the show. And they were going to corner me because what was worse is right Why across the street. From, yeah, right, well, right across the street from the venue was my motel. So you okay. could watch us crossing the street, get gotcha. to the motel. And I'm like, this is not going to be a good night. Were you talking about him on stage? Did he just no. Him? He yeah, just was just, drunk or something? They, he was drunk. They gotcha. just kept heckling us and they were gotcha. a pain in the ass. Gotcha. Now, my saving grace was... Uh, so we're at the show and they, yeah, they heckled through the whole thing. I was emceeing and featuring. So that was a hell nice. of a night. And I'm like, right. oh my God, my first weekend touring and this is bullshit. Wow. <laughs> so we finished the show. Garrett does his set. And of course, they just weren't going to let it lie. Heckled him the whole time. And luckily, there was this group of guys that were up there working for BC Hydro. They were doing some pipe work or something up there. They kind of like, why don't you come sit with us? And it's the cool kid in school. I'm like, yeah, we'll come sit at your cafeteria table. Right. So we go and sit down and had a few drinks and stuff with them. They looked after us. These guys were waiting for us outside. They still wanted to beat us up. And I'm what? like, I'm like, this is where women like me come to die. I don't want this happening. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, please don't let this happen. Right. Not today. Yeah. And I'm like, not today, Satan. No. Right. So I want, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. So these guys took care of us and they looked after us. Mm. These guys finally left, got us back to our motel. I was so happy. But the funny thing is, is that the leader of that group uh, is now one of my best friends. What? Uh, he was actually here in Vegas this last weekend. Oh, he came was up the guy that was at the show? Yeah. Wow. So he came at the show. Him, the and his, him and his brother came out to the show. They're two of, like, he's my probably one of my best friends. I can call wow. him at the drop of a hat. he was one of the hat. guys who looked out for you when you were out there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. So he wow. totally looks after. He still does. Like, if I'm at a show or something in Seattle or Tacoma or something right. or even in Spokane, he'll just be like, oh, I'm going to drive out and watch wow. him. So we finally, we'll get to hang out. No, how Canadian of you guys? Let's yeah, right? right? I know. Just have a beer, mate. I will look great. out for her for the rest of her life. Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> oh, right, right. Oh, don't you know? Don't right. you know, matey? <laughs> Super dope. Very nice. It was so, so weird. So it's it was... so good to finally sit down with you and I know. To catch up. We've been working together and side yeah. by side and kicking it and, you know, uh, yeah. shoulder to shoulder for a while. But Trying to make this home. We're yeah, trying to. So yeah. hopefully a couple months. So. From, uh, was it, Vancouver to Vegas or something like that? Yeah. Where are you originally from in, in Canada? Uh, originally from St. Catharines, Ontario, which is about an hour outside Toronto. Okay, okay. So you're on the Toronto yeah, side. Yeah. I hear they're kind of like, yeah. you know, West Coast. Oh, East no, Coast West Coast coming. and East Coast. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. No. If you're from Toronto, they don't like anyone from Vancouver. Really? Anyone from Vancouver is like, oh, those people from East Toronto Coast, are West so... Coast, West Coast beef exists in Canada too. I'll oh, be yeah. Down. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. But Vancouver's been my home, jeez, 35. Oh, my God. Wow. It's going on 35 years. Wow. It's been my home. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. 
It was a now, long time. Now, what was life like before you started stepping into comedy? Because you've been in the game for a minute. <laughs> what the hell was Susan doing before she was entertaining people? Oh, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, see, really? I think people yeah. are going to be surprised. Yeah, like, we want to know. I was a stay-at-home mom with two kids. Wow. Yeah, I was married, married with two kids. Wow. Um, owned the largest independent automotive shop in British Columbia. Oh, wow. And uh, I was a stay-at-home mom. Like, I was originally, I'm a licensed hairstylist and uh, platform artist, so I worked with, like, Davinez and Wella and nice. spa utopia companies and stuff. So I would go around and uh, I worked in the schools. I would train new students and then I would work in the salons and I would train like uh, people that were already in the business. Nice. But I was so allergic to it. Wow. So I ended up after a while, we're like, you know what? I'm making, it's costing me money to send these kids to daycare. Maybe it's time to stay home. Right. Stayed home for a number of years and then uh, literally. So you went from stay at yeah. home mom to comedy? Like, well, uh, yeah, literally all of a sudden it came <laughs> home. They're like, um, I think I want a divorce, and I'm like, oh, wow. okay, right. I can do this. So yeah. I knew I was on my own, and I I had just started comedy. I was probably maybe a few years in. How did that even come about? Because I, I don't I know care, how common yeah. it is in Canada for yeah, somebody just like, all right, you know, I'm just going to start doing something new. Was it How random was that? Yeah, just, it was, did you just uh, do a mic, or did you get booked? Like, how did no, that it was, I ended up going into the hospital for I'm bipolar uh -huh. and I needed to be regulated, I guess. All? Aren't we all? Yeah, those, those Mike McDonald. But there's levels. There's yeah. Different levels. Yeah, well, Mike yeah. McDonald was a comic. He always said, how many people here in the audience have uh, mental illness and you'd only hear a few people mm -hmm. clap their hands for you? Like those ones, he says, those that are diagnosed and the rest of you, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> so, basically. Yeah, so I remember yeah. I went into the hospital and I knew as soon as I went in, I was like, this is, this is not going to go well. Yeah. But I knew I was in a better place. I was yeah. like, okay. I ended up, yeah, because I uh, a few months before that, I had a massive um, heart attack in oh Miami, of all places. I had wow. an anaphylactic heart attack, and I think that was finally, I just kind of woke up from that trip, because I remember I had to get on the cruise ships two days later, and they actually let me on the cruise ships. Wow. And they're like, you're healthy enough, you can get on the cruise ships, because I went through massive weight loss of like 150 pounds. What? Yeah, you were, uh, I was what? 150 pounds what? bigger than this. Yeah, wow, you got a little Jenny Jones story, oh, yeah. a little Ricky Lake. You know, <laughs> yeah. those stories. Okay, yeah, From like geek to she. Oh, remember yeah. these shows used to be? You know yeah, <laughs> someone gave me a gift. Someone gave me a gift certificate for a CrossFit gym, and I thought, okay, I'll go what? check this out. And I ended up being um, getting into CrossFit, and then I entered like weightlifting competitions wow. and competitions, and I was a trainer. And uh, I got away from it because I had surgery a few years later. Mm. And I just. I can't do it anymore. Gotcha. I just can't. I'm like, I don't want, it's like being in an abusive relationship. They're yelling <laughs> and screaming and throwing shit at you. And I'm like, yeah. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so it was comedy is, uh, it, I had to make something work. I knew I had to be on my own. And right. I'm like, all right, let's, what else am I going to do? I'm like, I know I'm funny. Because right. I remember in school, remember when you get like your report cards from your teachers, and you're like, she has a great sense of timing. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> what do I do with timing? I'm like, I don't is know anyone what that hiring is? for a timer? Yeah, is anyone <laughs> to know what that is? I'm like 12 years old. I'm like, I don't know what that is. So I was, I went to a fine arts school and I thought, you know what? It's time to start pulling out the stuff that I know I was good at. And then yeah. I know it was, there's just something about being on stage and making people laugh. So like, it was literally on a dare. I got into a program called Stand Up for Mental Health. Ah. And it was, you know, part of your therapy, trying to figure out how to deal with what this, all of a sudden I've been given this thing of they're like, oh, by the way, you're bipolar. Uh, mm. Thanks for stopping by. Mm. You're like, what the fuck do, what I, do I do with this? With this? Right. So just trying to learn about uh, what I am. And I was like, all right, I know I'm, I can still be funny and I can help people. Like there's nothing better than getting off a stage yeah. and meet, well, meet new people like you guys and stuff, like getting yeah. off a stage. And so it's like, hey man, you know, I really needed that today. Like, yeah. thanks. Right. Like, that's the best feeling, and it's the best therapy to right. me. So you got involved via that avenue yeah. versus the show they had there. And I that did. was your opportunity to kind of yeah. break out and speak in front of people. I know, like, yeah. Wow. And, then, and then, like, uh, eight Were you or nervous? Nine. That sounds like a pretty bold move, just going it, kind of cold I, into yeah. the industry like that. I, w I was, I figured the way I looked at it, <laughs> and I kid you not, I was like, yeah. there's one light pointing at me. I'm like, these people are never going to remember who the hell <laughs> yeah, I am. True, so true. I was like, what does it matter? True. Yeah, so I remember I just, I got wow. on stage, I did it, and the audience was so receptive, because wow. I thought they were going to be receptive, like, oh, congratulations, look, she's sick, and the rest of them, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're getting their life together. Right. No, it was it was one of those things where I, I stood out a little, mm -hmm. and I kept doing it, and now, yeah, during pandemic, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do now? Like, How long ago pandemic, was this, by the way, before you started that been, dabbling in the comedy? I've, this will be my 10th year. Nice. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Same. I'm around the 10th, yeah. going to the 11th year. And so. it's, yeah, it's funny it's, how uh, stuff starts to yeah. work out, right? Like yeah. during pandemic, I'm like, what am I going to do? And then I pick up the tour with Jeremy Hotz. And yeah. then I picked up America's Got Talent Extreme. Yeah. With, with like Brooke N, Katie K. Wow. And uh, 
Carrie Gallagher. Wow. And we had so much fun. My goodness. That was probably one of the funnest things I've ever done in my life. People are like, you were the first ones kicked off. How does that feel? I'm like, it was, feels great, motherfucker. All right. It was, it was probably, it was just an experience that, when did you? Of, how did you even go about getting an opportunity on America's Got Talent? It was, was it? It was nuts. Like, uh, well, Katie K. I think mm-hmm. she was on last Shout season. Shout out to Katie K. Hey girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was on Laugh After Dark. She's been on a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we so made the the festival at Big Pine. Yeah, Big Pine. yeah, yeah. yeah she, so she, she was played. on. Uh, she ended up. They brought her on. They wanted to do some different stuff during pandemic. But gotcha. don't forget, during pandemic, those theaters were empty. So mm. those performers are performing to an empty audience. Mm. So it's just the judges, and right. the judges were like. What the hell is this? Because she was literally fighting Jello against herself, right. so she was channeling the Jello. Yeah. But they really liked her. They're like, "This girl's funny." When they started to talk to her, yeah. So I guess Simon's had extreme shelved for years because you need a venue big enough to do all this. So pandemic hits, and they're like, "You know what? All those performers that we couldn't put on EGT regular, mm. let's put them on extreme." Mm. So we literally got a contact from uh, one of the producers. They're like, "Hey, we want to bring KDK back, but we want we want more extreme. Like, let's bring a team together." And we're like, oh, "We'll bring a team. Let's do this." Right. So we're fighting the Jello, and <laughs> I kind of I knew I stood out a little because I was the only Where one. Where did that with, idea? Like, well, she already had the Jello going. You were like, "All right, let's yeah. do it. We're gonna attack the Jello." Oh yeah, we totally okay. did. And like we, I thought we when we were showing up, I thought we were gonna have like one big thing of Jello. Right. We're gonna be That's wrestling this too. Jello, and right. they're like, they're like, you know. We like what we're seeing here. We're going to bring in more jello for you guys. So they brought in, I, it was uh, 16 feet what? by 8 feet, four huge uh, pools, blow up pools. Yeah. It took jello. them three days to make all this jello silica product. <laughs> and we watched them. Wow. So we're in the holding area upstairs and we're watching this crane bring this jello out and we're like this is wow. not like a little thing us. that's that we got the yeah. jello coming yeah we're like this is a big <laughs> deal like we were the last performers at night so they filmed um b rules all week with us so like monday through friday they filmed all the b rules and film? stuff atlanta georgia atlanta at the, georgia um, at the atlanta motor speedway wow yeah. atl shout okay, <laughs> nice. it how was that had you been to atlanta before no oh, no shit. one told me it was so humid there <laughs> i put my phone down yeah, on the table and i'm like and shit out there. Yeah, mosquitoes and all yeah that. and i'm like did i just st- <laughs> were you squishing caterpillars sir when i yeah. shook his hand like there was it, everything was wet <laughs> yeah so as soon as we got outside and we're in metallic costumes so as soon as they made us do any kind of running it was just yeah, Ugh, you feel your whole body slick, is driven. Yeah, this slick feeling, but yeah, they filmed B reels all week, and it was uh, I was surprised because they did um, physical checks with us, they mm. did psychological checks with us. You what? had to sign lawyers' paperwork. Wow, you had to do COVID testing, PCR testing. I was like, this is the safest Man. place in America right. to be. Sound like Men in Black, y'all was qualified <laughs> for him. What is this? It was, <laughs> it, it was probably one of the most fun experiences wow. ever. So then on Saturday, or was it Saturday or Sunday? I forget what night they filmed us. We were the last ones to go up. So those audiences have been sitting there since 8 a.m. that morning watching the rest of these performers go through in the blazing heat uh, the first week of October, the second week of October. Oh, my God. Yeah, because that's when I first met you guys. You guys Uh, did all the promo videos for me. We did. And at the festival, (laughs) yeah. And you brought the idea to us. You know, we're out there high like... So what do you want us to help you with? So what are you doing? Like, why is she wearing a metallic costume? <laughs> right. Here right. I am in my cape, my Superman cape. I still wear that cape. Right. See, now you can't let go of the cape. cape. See I that? love that cape. And the funny thing now is it's turned into this weird fetish. I'm starting uh, to get. See that? I'm starting yeah. to get messages like, can we buy the socks? I'm like, new ones? They're like, no, used ones. I'm like, Whoa, you want used The creeps. Socks. You got all the creeps mm-hmm. now. Let me lift that cape up, Susan. What you got going on underneath that cape, Susan? Show us underneath the cape. We just want to see you in the cape. See that? It was fun. I like, but I mean, comedy in the last few years, like it's taken me all over the place. Like I finally. Yeah. Starting to work in the states, I get to meet you guys. Yeah, Black after yeah, dark yeah. and stuff. Yeah, uh, like I said, I got tour with Jeremy coming up and stuff. So nice. um, I just booked another tour, so I'll be doing uh, for another week throughout the interior of BC. I'll be doing the rank and vile tour with Kenny Robinson and nice. Darren Frost. So those are two huge Canadian icons. And wow. then the next week I'll be with uh, Jeremy Hotz, and then I've got Tricks coming into town. Hey, too. shout out to so Tricks! So like, I can't, yeah. I can't complain. Like, wow. I you know, really it's, there's so many complain. highs and lows in this business, you know. Yeah. As a comedian, as you're figuring your shit out, you're going throughout life, life is going, ah, ah. Mm-hmm. But also your time in the comedy industry is also rewarding you too. So yeah. you're constantly rising and elevating, but you're still getting, ah. You're still getting the yeah, you're shit beaten out of you. You're just still persevering. Yeah. You know? 
and it yeah, because exactly like what you said, you get this one great thing that happens, and yeah. then maybe you get a tax bill. You're like, oh, by the way, you owe us like eighty five hundred bucks. You're like, how am I gonna right, do this? Right. But it's just, I don't know. It, I would do it all over again. I would definitely do it the same way. I don't think it would change anything because I think it's made me who I am, mm. and being able to meet all the people I've been able to meet. So. Build so much character. Yeah. You know, but once you start to really direct your attention towards the good things and what yeah. is working and having gratitude and working from, from a place of gratitude, mm -hmm. then those jabs and all those things that go that come your way in life, you become a little bit more resilient because yeah. you still understand your dreams are still coming true. Things still are there. still happening in the midst of, you know, getting yeah. those, ah! Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> you're like, all right, I need to ride the wave, right? Yeah, but you guys, ride the wave. Like, you guys have a great scene here. Oh, like, man. you really do. Like, Vancouver's got a, it's got a big scene. It's a showcase town, very much yeah. like this one here. Like, yeah. not a lot of paid work here. Mm -hmm. But you've got some great comics here. You've got some great content, great places to work. How would you compare the the comedy scenes that are different? Like, you know, you know the Vancouver comedy scene, does it stretch much further outside of Vancouver? I know that's uh, kind of there. And same thing in Toronto. You know, I know yeah, Toronto's yeah. a little bit more city light and busy yeah. and active. I haven't been out there yet, but that's kind of what I I'm mean, doing. there's lots within the city, like within the city borders. Yeah, there's lots. There's lots of open mics. There's lots yeah, of sure. um, showcases. There's lots of opportunity to do the indie shows and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, once you just get outside Vancouver, like I'm, basically where I live is Langley. So it's like between LA and Long Beach. Gotcha. It's kind of distance, like gotcha. 40 minutes. Yep. But once you get into Langley, like that's a family Is community. Langley like Long Beach? Yes. <laughs> very much. Like, yeah, it's, a, oh, okay. it's just a lot of subdivisions. It's a family oriented community. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you've got restaurants and clubs and stuff, but not to the same degree that you would in gotcha. the city. Gotcha. But we've got, it's a, big arts community, so nice. there's lots of venues to start using those stages now that everything's finally open. Right. It's been a hell of a two years. Nice. You guys finally open. I I get off the plane June set was it June second, I come yeah. out here. Canada's still fully locked down. I get to the yeah. I get on the plane, they're like, welcome to the first day of Las Vegas. Everything's fully open. I'm like, do I need to keep this on? <laughs> right. I was terrified. Yeah. So it was so different. But I mean <sighs> How would you describe the comedy scene out here to all the fellow Canadians watching and wondering, yeah. how's it in Vegas? How, what is the oh. scene like out here? What's life like out I know, there? I almost don't want to say anything. Like, <laughs> don't come down yeah, here. Yeah, they're going to come follow you. Yeah, I know Susan, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, Susan sent me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I would much rather be down here uh -huh. with less than be where I am right now in Canada. I mean, things are just starting to get started up again. The clubs are just starting to open. The open mics and everything are just starting to open again. So we kind of followed that same kind of guidelines as California. Yeah. California, like, what is it? Netflix Ooh, is a strict. joke. You still got to wear masks to go yeah, to the festival. I'm like, yeah, what? I'm like, they you made you sit outside on the patio to go eat. You couldn't go inside. Yeah, it was, yeah they did that yeah. with, uh, with we did one show for Jeremy because we had, tour was supposed to be January through May. Okay. And then it got cut up over the winter time. They went, um, we're going to make you guys go to half capacity if the venues are over 500. We're like, what? Mm. So we've spread it out. But the first show we did get to do was in Alberta. Oh, nice. And it was on a technicality, though. We were, I'm trying to remember the area we were in. Uh, super nice people, beautiful venue. And it held, I think it was 470 people. And wow. then with staff, it was 499. Wow. So we were allowed to do that show. Uh, but we had to prove, like, COVID vaccinations before we went in. Mm. Poor Jeremy. <laughs> We ended up getting a positive. He's like, Sue, I'm positive. Oh, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Start driving all over town trying to figure out what we need to do. So we're at a, he's like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. We're at a shopper's drug mart. Yeah. He's like, this, of course, he starts panicking. And I'm like, I'll be right there. We'll make sure we get this done. So make sure get him to a real lab, get a real test done. We had to get two other tests done before we could get him into the venue. Wow, it was so, so crazy was just, keeping up with all that. Yeah. Just the stress of trying to get him into that venue. Like it was, right. but I mean, they were the nicest people. They looked after us. Nice. It was a fantastic show. We did the meet and greet. We do photo bombs. So we don't actually put our arms around people and stuff. So like you might photo bomb right. in the background or right, whatever, right, right. which totally works out. People love them. But I mean, in times of pandemic, you guys have had to do it here. I mean, you just, you change the way you do stuff. You don't yeah. necessarily stop what you're doing, but you change the way you're doing right. it. I think that's the biggest thing that I've been able to appreciate since this pandemic has you know, at least giving us the opportunity to do stuff like this yeah. is appreciating these moments where we can interact and hug each other again. And see faces. And interact and see faces and smiles, you know. I know. We, it was like, you know, it was so cold, you know, know. during those times. You know, we, we lost that, that that connection that we have now. You know, well, taught us to appreciate it too. Yeah, because I think even when we were all in, um, we were in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. There were like 50% of the time, we didn't even see each other's faces. We all still had those masks on. I mean, I know a lot of times 
in Phoenix, they're like, take that mask off. It's like, yeah, no, I think yeah. I'm going to keep it on. Face. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. you're not from here. I'm like, no, I'm from Canada. They're like, no. oh, it says oh, a lot. Got it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, to finally be here and nice. to see people get off that plane and I don't need to have a mask and yeah. I don't even need to keep one in my bag yeah. except for Uber. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. We all have to have I still make it happen on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But even a lot of the Uber drivers are like, we're done with that shit. Take that mask off. <laughs> they're like, okay, sorry. Right. Nice. So how are you settling uh, into Vegas and, you know, are you uh, I love it. liking it? I really, I think people have welcomed me with open arms. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything to give people. So it feels genuine. Like they actually want to chat with me and talk with me. And I got to know a lot of these people, like a lot of the headliners that you have here in town. Like Trix has been a friend of mine for probably 10 years. Yeah. I got to know Jay Hollingsworth and Carlos Rodriguez yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff because um, they came to my club in Vancouver and oh, they worked right. for me there or yeah. a lot of them stayed at my house. Yeah, because you produce as well. If people yeah. don't, don't know, we get a little, we lost that tap of it. People don't yeah, know that. Yeah, I, I used to run uh, Laugh Lines Comedy Club in New Westminster and mm-hmm. then it went to, it um, eventually was purchased by House of Comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a House of Comedy now and I was booking there for a while and then as of this month, I am no longer booking with them anymore. Gotcha. I'm, I'm on my own, everybody. On your own out here. Now, how did you yeah. transition into booking? Because we skipped all past that. I know. Because most comics are just comics. They want to get stage time. They want to get yeah. stage time. I want to get funnier. Let me work yeah. on my set. What is this booking and this producing aspect coming to the, was, into play for you? It was it was random. I mean, it was literally, I was, all of a sudden I went through divorce. I was a single mother. Right. I knew I needed to have some form of, some type of employment. Right. And I'm like, comedy ain't going to pay the bills <laughs> right now. Right, right. Yeah, because when you're an MC or a feature comic, like you're not getting right. your rooms looked after and you're not getting really good rates. So to right. work my way in, I literally said to them at the club, um, Jillian, she was one of the club owners. Um, she was the original owner's um, stepdaughter. Mm. I said to her, I was like, what are you looking for? She's like, are you interested? And I was like, I think I am. Yeah. And I ended up taking on that role as a full-time Booker. club manager. And oh, then I wow. booked the headliners and features. Wow. And then uh, I left for a period of time because we couldn't come to an agreement of what the club needed. So we knew gotcha. there was it was still going to be in transition. I was like, we need to get something done because this city needs this club. Right. This is so, Vancouver. Yeah. Or Langley, or is it Vancouver. Vancouver. Just Vancouver, outside okay. Vancouver. Uh, it's just outside Vancouver. It's an area called New West. So it's about 20 minutes outside Vancouver. Cool. And... Um, I was working for a gentleman named Jake Hirsch, and uh, we were like, yeah, we're on board. Like, let's see what we can do to get this club going. But because the venue is so big, it's 300 mm. seats downstairs and 200 seats upstairs. Oh, wow. So it's not a little theater. Like, this is an old heritage vaudeville theater. Wow. And we knew it was going to be too big for us. So we eventually started talking to Rick and Tammy Bronson for House of Comedy, and mm. um, so happy they came into it. Like, they've got five clubs now they've got edmonton vancouver and then there's uh minnesota ah, that okay. i love saying and then we've got el plano and uh, phoenix gotcha so i work with them for a period of time but now that i'm doing more stuff like um with jeremy and uh, i'm kind of all over right they need someone that's gonna be there more and i get it so i i started to leave and i'm like now i'm in this new chapter this is the first week of this new chapter i'm like yeah what do I do? What's happening now? Yeah, I'm like, what do I do for myself? <laughs> right. So I know at some point I know I'll be here more full time, just trying to finalize the rest of that yeah, paperwork. Yeah, now the yeah. pandemic's over and yeah. we'll see what's gonna happen. Things are so, settling. So it's it literally I'm starting to That's sweat. I'm getting so now. nervous. Yeah, I'm yeah, sweating and yeah, yeah, yeah. goosebumps. But, I'm like, what but do you know I do what I always say? Three words. Trust the process. You know, know. trust the process. It's I'm hard learning. to do. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm because it's always worked out, right? Yeah. It's worked out this far. But still, I'm one of those people like I'll lay there in bed, you know, you have your weed <laughs> yeah. for the night, and I'm like, I'm yeah. good. Like, I'm good. And about three o'clock in the morning, the weed wears off. You're like, you're like right. You, you start thinking that? about the shit that's happening. Yeah. Right? You're like, do you remember that car payment you didn't make? You got to make <laughs> right, sure you get that done. Oh, right. you remember your daughter needs boots or oh, something? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what am I going to do for the next couple of months with shows? Right. I'm like, oh my right. God. Yeah, no, life doesn't stop, and life oh. humbles you really quickly. Again, these highs we experience in the industry are great, and oh, it's on Instagram, hey. Yeah, oh. everyone thinks your you life know? is like that yeah. all the time. Then you go home, and it's like, Bill, ah, notification, <laughs> ah, don't disconnect, hello, <laughs> oh, uh, the operator, uh, <laughs> representative. I wanted to work out a payment plan, please. <laughs> well, I went home from you guys the other night. It was the best just to guess with you guys at the notoriety for Laugh yeah, After Dark. And yeah. I was like, 
Trix calls. He's like, I see you did made a great your... job on set, by the way. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And Trix is like, I see you made your debut. Yeah, like, I did it. I did it. <laughs> but then I literally. How was that, by the way? It was. It was a lot of fun. Like that's a fun room. That's yeah. a fun room. I'm like, as long as you look like you're having a good time yeah. and you're honest with people, they'll yeah. be receptive. But I literally went home that night, <laughs> finished everything up, got an Uber, took me home. Uh, or actually, Steve took me home, does the morning podcast here. Oh, so he yeah, dropped yeah. me off at home. So what am I doing? All of a sudden, I'm like, it's Saturday night. I finished an f- amazing show, and I'm sitting here in bed eating deep fried ravioli. Deep fried ravioli. Watching <laughs> Emily in Paris. So, I'm like, I have made it. Right, <laughs> so right, it's right, worth right, it. Right. right. Very cool. But I needed that. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, too, with this business, sometimes we get, you know, sad or we, you know, depressed or we beat ourselves up. You know, comics yeah. can be the worst sometimes. But there's, you know, it's only a matter of time before you get that next, yeah, uh, that next yeah. boost, you know, that next piece of momentum that shifts you and gives you the energy you need to keep pushing. Yeah. You know, but you just have to keep putting one foot in front of one the other. One foot in front of the other. And, and sometimes it's meeting the right people, too. Like, all of a sudden, you just, you know what it's like when you get to that and you're like, where am I going to go from here? It's almost like you've reached your own little bit of a glass ceiling. Right, right. And you're like, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Right. Those are the times you know you need to get out even more to connect with more people to figure yeah. something out, whether it's producing a new show, whether right. it's... I've even told comics, like, I know a lot of comics, they'll shit on festivals. I'm like, go to a festival once a year. I'm like, yeah. meet other comics that are in that same place as yeah. you. You don't have to be in the festival. Go check it out. Check out who's on the lineups. Uh, go see who's the special performers. Go see who's the industry. Right. That's probably one of the best ways I've been able to move forward is some of the industry I've been able to meet. I've met like uh, casting for like America's Got Talent. I've wow. met uh, casting for certain agencies here in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, JFL. And so I'm actually surprised the amount of people that I finally able to meet and keep those contacts in your back pocket. Mm. Don't forget to take their names down. Don't forget to hit them up and be like, hey, it was great seeing you at this festival yeah. or whatever. This is a business. Let's connect again. Yeah. And I'm surprised how many comics don't know how to do that. And I'm like, yeah. you're in sales. Yeah, you know. You're like, you know, you're you in know, sales. Yeah. Like, you're a product. You're selling yeah. a product. You're selling right. yourself. So, I right. mean, the only way you're going to get ahead is, yeah, to keep selling that product and selling yourself and getting better and meeting more people and networking. Take some notes. I don't know oh, if y'all yeah. listen. Y'all better take some notes. <laughs> She's dropping some gems. She ain't charging yet. <laughs> but that's that's the key. It's like, man, comics always are like, you know, I'm not having any luck. I mean, it's tough or it's rough out here. It is like, hey, business. be patient with yourself and understand, like, you also have to be, you know, selling yourself. You know, you are a product, you know, so yeah. that makes a big difference in this. So don't get frustrated. Just be patient and keep doing the work. Set up a schedule. Set up, you know, hey, I want to hit this many clubs a week. I know I'm having to kick myself and do the same thing. Because, know. you know, I'm a little introverted sometimes, too. We go out, we're on stage. We go yeah. out, we do the stuff. And then we go home, it's like, just give me the sheets and the blanket. And the I snacks. know, you're like, I'm just going to relax in oh, these sweatpants. Never leave it here again. This is so good. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, like, I got excited. Yeah. I think a few weeks ago before I came on here, I'm like, I bought a new bed set. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. Right. Like, I was actually excited to go to bed. I'm like, this is going to be so good. Right. When you get older, those little things that yeah. do it for you, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, I, right. Yeah, I got excited because I new bought sheets. new sheets for the bed yeah. and a magic bullet. I bought a new magic bullet. I'm like, yeah. this breakfast tomorrow is going to be amazing. Wait a minute. What's, I, what's this bullet? What's that? Magic bullet What's you've that? never had one it's the individual that's the you know the little blender the oh girl blender. you gotta break it down i don't know it's, it's vegas you gotta oh, it's good. It's heard so of good. other bullets so well, I, when i was uh going through my weight <laughs> loss and training i would yeah. get up every morning i cannot go to the gym without something in my stomach can't do it i'm not one really of people. no i'm can't. the opposite mm-hmm. i can't eat anything oh really and I, if I, go, I, I gotta go cold maybe an apple maybe a banana yeah, yeah but well, I, can't I, eat much. I have to have something so i would have like a smoothie whether okay. it's like half and always the same i always uh what's your go-to my go-to, because it's a perfect post-workout, uh-huh. rather than taking post-workout, I would do, it was half a banana, mm. um, half a cup of chocolate milk, mm. uh, a couple of tablespoons of like chia seeds or something, uh-huh. and maybe throw in a few strawberries for that extra, like that sugar, yeah, yeah, that yeah, boost yeah, yeah, you need, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So you've got the perfect mix of your potassium, your electrolytes, your salt, your sugars, everything in there. Right. So I would have that go to the gym, do my workout or whatever. Like, I like lifting. I miss it. Like, I'm missing the cut and I stuff. See the gun, I see the guns they're out gun, there. She got the guns they're out. Not, they're well, not show them one time. Oh. Bow! You know what I'm <laughs> I want more. I want them yeah. back. So I want like, more. Oh, yeah. yeah. I miss those days. I miss getting up, like, 5 yeah. o'clock in the morning, going to the gym. And, you, yeah, you feel like you, you accomplished something. I worked out today. This is the first time I worked out in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, yeah, really? I'm feeling yeah. good. You get the endorphins yeah. going. Yeah, you do. It's just being consistent, man. I did upper body. So I went to the legs. Uh, a few days ago and I was like, all right, let me make today an upper body day, but it's just staying consistent. Yeah. Well, I ain't been to the gym since January first yeah. week. <laughs> since it was New Year, new me. That was oh, the last I remember, I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I remember when the gyms opened again where I am and then they were like, Don't forget you gotta bring your vaccine passports and everything. Yeah. But to get into the gym was like close to an hour for them to get used to that program of 
checking your passport and then yeah. checking your ID and stuff. Wow. So there'd be a lineup. I'm like, is this a nightclub? Right, right, damn. So you can finally get back in, right? Yeah. But so I finally got tired of it. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to do it at home. So I always have the same stuff at home because um, I used to do a ton of CrossFit workouts. Um, so I'll do really short CrossFit workouts with like HIIT training okay. or skipping rope, bands. Okay. bands. What is that, bands? Oh, bands, bands. are good. Anything yeah. that's cheap and you're Lower small, you can throw in your luggage, right? Right. But go through security with that stuff. Like, what are you doing with this very small <laughs> skipping rope? So I'll make sure I put other stuff in my bag so it throws them right off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love doing that shit, oh, going funny. through security. yeah. It's actually true. When I go through security at the airport, because I hate these people so much, I'll purposely go through security and I carry like in the very front pouch of my carry-on bag. It's usually full of like butt plugs. Oh shit! Yeah. Right. Butt plugs, the other anal bullet. Beads. Yeah, I'll keep other stuff in there. They did. It. They actually did it to me See? at the airport. Like, excuse me, whose bag is this? I'm like, oh, that's mine. Right. So he get, get to the front. He looks. And he goes, and you can see him looking at the front. He kind of put his hand over the top. He's like, you're good to go. Yeah. He's like, thank you so much, sir. You, you have a good up, day, man. Just enjoy your trip. But sometimes they'll pull it out. Like, there's been a couple of times they whip it out. They're like, and what is this? I'm like, if you don't know, you need to get out more. Yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. Like, you need to have more fun. But have fun with it. If you're gonna if you're gonna go through security or you're gonna yeah. have, you know you're gonna have a stressful day, like airports suck. Yeah. Enjoy the day, enjoy the process. Yeah. Have Embrace fun with it. the day, do Embrace little it. things, right? Facts. Okay, so you had some weight loss success. I was about mm. same thing. I was about uh uh the most I ever weighed was about two hundred and like thirty eight pounds. You know, you are you on yeah. where did you yeah. get it? So right now I'm probably about two hundred and five. Last time I weighed myself, I was, you Holy know, two oh two. Wow. But yeah, I was about two forty. I was living in Dallas at the time. I was in the car business for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're getting those routines. You're at yeah. work, you're sitting down. Yep. Hey, let's go get food. Hey, what are we eating? You know, I'm just I'm yep. just going and to you're work. Like, what is what's happening? Yeah. Man? Before I knew it, I was in, you know, 36s and I'm in 38s. And 38s is hugging. I was like, oh I shit. Wearing... I got a fatty. I'm out yeah. here looking thick like a southern woman. I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something <laughs> about this. <laughs> I was wearing a 42 inch waist. Wow. I was in the moment that I knew I had to do something. Um, I had the heart of, I uh I was literally on the cruise ship. I was in Egypt of all places. Wow. So I'm on the cruise ship. Sounds like a uh, nice cruise. It was it was gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, every two years, like we were working through this company, Lord Coast. When you own an automotive shop, a period of your sales over the two years go oh. to this trip. Oh. So I'm in Egypt. I'm like, this is gonna be great. But what they didn't tell me was they took pictures of us during the day at the pyramids. Wow. So I see a picture of myself. It flashes across the screen, <laughs> and there's like five thousand people sitting there. And I'm like, yeah. I, I'm like. Oh, hell right, no. Right, Who's that one? Yeah, right. I got on the boat that day. I think I was the only person wow. in the history of cruise ships that got on the, that actually lost weight on the cruise ship. Wow. So I, I got back on the boat, and I'm like, I need a trainer. They're like, oh, there's no one here today. I'm like, or right now, they'll be here in a couple hours. I'm like, I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. I waited. I, I ate in that dining room every night. They wow. had a setup plan. There was a couple of times to be like, hey, guys, can you give me a couple extra snacks? I'm like, no, Miss Thompson, we have strict, wow. we have strict stuff that you're supposed to be on. I'm like, I didn't think they would follow it, but I think on that cruise I lost like twelve pounds. What? Went home and the biggest loser right there on yeah. the ship, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I, I, but I mean, I as soon as I got home, I continued right away. Damn. I got into that a trainer, and I um, and it was an expensive trainer. It was all done online because we've got public health care in Canada. So wow, there's this, that, that, that there's yeah. the thing they've got mm. that. So there's there's a service you can dial. It's called eight one one, which is dial a nurse with dial a dietitian. America, we're doing something wrong. It's just we need the eight one one here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, she would set up. And of course, diet plans and stuff. And then wow. as I got as I got more into it, I was like, you know what? I'm actually pretty good at this. And I'm like, if I can encourage somebody else right. to help look after themselves, like I'm not I'm not even close to perfect. I do what's the 80 20. So I eat well 80% of the time, then 20%. Yeah. You got to have your fun stuff. You got to have your birthday cake, yeah. wedding cake. What's your fun stuff? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what's the fun stuff? I'm a cake. I like cake. Oh, I like cookies. Oh. Pies. Oh, oh Kelsey and them know, man. When I, whenever we oh, link up, God. I'm like, what's the sweets? What are we eating? We are going I to want the pie. <laughs> you and I are going to a buffet. I'm Let's telling go. you that. Oh, yeah. What do you like? I pies? love like cakes, pies. Yeah. I love that. Like, I'll sit in bed with a bag of like the other night. <laughs> I know I'm not making I'm sitting in bed with a bag of chips, the Doritos, the cool ranch. Oh, yeah. But I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm like, Susan, you have problems. Like, I lick all the stuff off the chips <laughs> and throw the chips what? away. <laughs> Who needs these chips? You got like, this chip is in the way. Fucking soft, moist, fucking tortilla chips over there now. It's just a <laughs> so I'm eating these chips. But like, See, but my, that's the shit you do on the first date. The dude's just kind of looking at you like, what the fuck is she doing? Look, look at all the big, big pile of soft this is why This is why no one's ever going to date me because I'm too oh, honest shit. with stuff. But like, like kryptonite, I love Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca-Cola, Coca really? Coca-Cola. Wow, yeah. It's got crack in it. 
<laughs> yeah, right. I Makes you believe, want more. I didn't believe that at first. Yeah. So you start to read it and you're like, what? This is a real thing. Yeah. Take yeah. creepy history. Look up creepy history and stuff throughout the time. And there's some good stuff out there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that blows people's mind. <laughs> but no, but, but once I lost that weight, you know, and I, I did the same thing, I just was like, man, this isn't you, bro. You know, yeah. you go to a pool, it's kind of like, you know, for all the thick guys out here, it's pool time. It's like, ah. Oh. Like, yeah, I was just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to wear, I'm just going to keep a t shirt on. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. good. Come on, Charlie, get in, man. It's hot, man. It's hot as hell. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just left a pool. I'm well, good. Then you finally work up the courage. You be like, uh, here it goes. Uh, this is me. You gotta hurry up and get in. So you gotta get in fast. I would do that. <laughs> you can't I, be outside. Chilling. I had it down to an art. Uh, I would with the t-shirt. Like I would take off the lower, like the shorts, and I'd be ready. I'd be like, and done. Go. Right. So I was already in the water. They're like, oh, that was very water ballet. I'm like, thank you, thank you so much. And I wouldn't get out. They're like, can you no. bring me the towel so you can no. make sure you, you just look at this part and lower. Chill. This part and lower. All you see now, I'm floating, bitch. You're not seeing these titties out here. No, you won't see my stomach. <laughs> I know. I'm like, no. Well, I'll meet y'all inside. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I knew funny. I knew there was problems though when I because I when I came back from the cruise and I started to go through the weight loss and I was actually in Vancouver of all places Damn. and I got approached by a modeling agency for plus size models. Whoa! And I, and I was like, no, he just reaffirmed. Whoa! And I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, I'm like, you can sign me when I'm back down to my normal weight. I'm like, I'm not happy like right, this. They're like, we don't want you when you're to your normal weight. <laughs> we want you right now. Come here, come here, Thickums. Bring up the gas over here. We want you in our magazine. You're like, no. So you should have got that check. I know. But no, I, I think I would have felt bad too if somebody would have hit me up like, hey, we want you for our plus size. Yeah, and, and I was like. And the CR section, I'd be like, man, no, I'm going to get clown. I'm going to get all the extra big and tall ass. Yeah, they're lucky I didn't poke them in the eye. I was just like. Yeah. Because, yeah, you don't realize when you approach them, they're like, oh, we'd love to consider you as a plus size mom. And you're like, what you do? Right, like, right. Don't confirm my insecurities, bitch. Get out of my yeah, face. Yeah, like, I don't need this. <laughs> right. I don't need this. Like, what did I do to you? Right. No, no. The, hard, the hardest part for me though was like the dieting and just trying to eat right. It's hard. Yeah. What do you do? Like, are you cooking or do you just yeah. eat out well? Oh, I would. Uh, I did a lot of um, like keto oriented. Like, I I didn't mm. cut stuff out entirely. Keto. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Yeah. So, like I said, I do what's the eighty twenty. So right. eighty percent of the time, I'm eating really really good. Yeah. And like I grilled still, chicken. Yeah, grilled salmon, chicken, like salmon, yeah. uh, even steak. I would still have steak and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it was high protein, lots of fruits and vegetables, and nice. very little like shitty fats or like yeah. extra treats right and yeah i think for the first couple of weeks when i started to do i was like oh my god i've lost like 15 pounds but it's yeah. like water weight and of yeah. course after a while it starts to taper off <laughs> it starts to taper off you're like two pounds son of a <laughs> yeah. like, i worked all i worked so hard this right. week and i lost two pounds yeah. or like half a pound or something right. but it was when you start to get people to say something because if you've got body dysmorphic images or you're trying to go through that loss, you still see yourself as what you were yeah. before. So to wow. hear people go, oh, you're losing weight. You look good. And you're like, yeah. oh, I am. I think, thank you. Yeah, like, right. I'll be like, let me bend over so you can see my right, head. Right, right. You can bounce quarters off that. Right, so right, right, right. It was just little stuff. So yeah, to finally, I remember, um, I think I finally got down to like 155 and I was like, I'm going to Lululemon. I live in, yeah. Van I live in Vancouver, right. which is like Lululemon headquarters. Yeah. And I was living across the street from the Lululemon headquarters. I was wow. like, I'm going in Chip Wilson. He, can, he, he can't tell me what I'm going to be wearing. Yeah. So I remember I went into that Lululemon for the first time. And it was a single digit. I tried on, I think I picked up a size 12 and she's like, this is too big for you, sweetheart. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> right, I'm like, right, tell right. me about my I eyes. love it here. I'm right. like, I love it in here. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, hmm, looks like you're an eight. I'm like, holy crap. Wow. Like, I don't remember the last time I'd done that, especially after having two kids and, you know, being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And you're so busy looking after everyone else. Yeah. You forget that if, really, if you're not healthy and oh. you're not happy. Message. There's another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You gotta do take it. care of yourself, especially in our line of work. It's so yeah. important. So I'm a big advocate of self care, self -care. and being an advocate for taking care of you. I go get my massages. I go get my pedicures. I'm trying to. What are you? Yeah, a pedicure I'm guy? a pedicure guy. Shut yeah, up. I'm that dude that walks in the salon. No? no color, no color. Haven't tapped into that dimension just oh, yet. Oh yeah. But okay. I do I'm go get the scrub and once. the callus removal. Whatever. Like, oh damn. Yeah. I need some backup. Let me get the callus. Like when you're when you're when you're on tour though, like if. Do you have anything you do in the hotel rooms or like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to. And, and on a perfect world, when I'm on the road somewhere, which is you know not not so much you know back to back, but I'll get in a workout. Yeah. I'll usually eat you know about five o'clock, four or five o'clock because I don't eat before shows. 
So oh, I need to make nice. sure I can eat a good meal and then poop a good poop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to be empty. I got to be empty. I can't go with all kind of shit going on. You know what I'm it's saying? Like, no. Get my good workout in. And then, um, yeah, I'll do like some stretches. Nice. Um, I don't usually drink until I get to the comedy show. Then I'll Same. have a drink You know, while yeah. I'm there. I don't usually go too much unless it's, you know, we're out to dinner. And hey, I get margarita, but I'm not going to Yeah, yeah. Shit, I still know? don't drink too much at, at shows because it's still, there's still that, I mean, Canada, we're still doing a lot of bar shows we're in the middle of areas you might not know where you are yeah it's still not i still won't drink by myself in a bar yeah as a female comic i'm like mm, this might not be a good idea yeah so i generally keep it in check but yeah i've got that one drink so you can go on stage you're like let's do this i'm happy i'm comfortable this is gonna be right. a great show let's do this yeah yes. gotta be something you know yeah. you mentioned you mentioned being a female comic and kind of having to take care of yourself out here and watch yeah. yourself out here you've been traveling all over the world yeah you yeah. know how how do you uh, have the the stamina and the mindset to continue to be in all these different places around all these different people and still take care of yourself. I'm sure there's I some still, form of self work and confidence. That comes yeah, I, I still love it. Like there's like I said before, there's just something about when someone says like, "Hey, I really liked what you were doing tonight. I really needed that. Thank you." Yeah. But then to get to a place like Las Vegas, yeah, I came here cold. It's almost like you're being the new kid in high school. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to crack into that group and see those people and they actually, you know, if you message them. It's hard to make friends as adults. Yeah. And to meet yeah. some of those people, you're like, okay, I can actually do this. Yeah. I, so, I mean, it's it's been interesting. But, yeah, you got to look after yourself. If I book Airbnbs, I'm not allowed to book my own Airbnbs anymore. Yeah. I booked one in Los Angeles. Yeah. And there was actually a dead body outside my window. What? Yeah. Uh, dead body outside the Airbnb? Uh, yeah. It was one of the first times I booked Airbnb Ambulance myself. Ambulance and stuff all outside or something? It was, or what? Oh, yeah. Wow. It was bad. So, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Broom, uh, he's a comic out of Phoenix, or he was. Yeah. Drops me off at this venue, and he's laughing at me. I'm like, what are you laughing for? I'm like, do not laugh. This is not funny. I'm like, this is where women like me are going to die. Like, this yeah. is not a good place to be. Yeah. So he pulls up to the venue, no power. There's no power in the entire building. It was an old radio and television building wow. on Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. So the owner at the property had said, we want you to go around back and come through the back entrance. We're like, oh, okay, it seems weird. Yeah. But when you went through the back, there was a motorhome on blocks. Yeah, some LA shit. And I'm right like, there. okay. Yeah, so we yeah, get yeah. into Welcome the Welcome to Hollywood, man. Yeah, it ain't find... the Hollywood y'all oh thought it was, was when yeah, when you were thinking about Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's Hollywood right here. We get inside, <laughs> drop my stuff off, and he's like, I'm gonna leave you here for a couple hours. He says like, he had a few things to do, and I'm like, This is this is not a good situation. Yeah. So I'm in my room and it's got this a lot of the venue the where y'all are doing the show. No, or is this, your Airbnb? this is an Airbnb. Oh, wow. So literally he says, well, I said, I'll check on you a couple hours because uh, you got to get to the show and stuff. So I remember laying down in my room. Well, there was a lock on my door, yeah. which somebody bypassed. I'm like, oh, sorry. Like I'm like, yeah. Like, okay. And then somebody got into my room and I'm like, seriously? Whoa. But it was just it was just a young woman. So I didn't think anything of it, scrambled it and closed the door. But on either side of in my room there is, it's an office building. So there are blinds and windows. Huh. So when I lay down, I look out and I'm like, there's an eye in this next room. I'm like, hell no, I'm out of here. What? I'm out of here. And I see someone looking at Does me. Does it look like, like apartment building? What'd you say? It was an old radio and television building. Uh, so it was vision and stuff, but they had it with both yeah, rooms so and beds he had, and stuff. Yeah, so converted. what I did is all the little recording studios. This is what happens when you try to get there. the cheapest deal on the Airbnb. Yeah, right. Hotel. Yeah, I was like, being some, some I shouldn't, shit. I shouldn't know better. Like forty five dollars a night, I score. Right, right, I right. Should know. <laughs> I should have known. So yeah, he actually, the guy threw beds into the little recording wow. studios and left them there. And at wow. one point, I remember I opened up the window of my room and I'm like, that is a strong odor coming from outdoors. Oh, shit. And it was a dead body outside. I literally right. packed up my stuff. I called a couple of hotels. I called the comedy store because a friend of mine was working there. Yeah. And uh, Mitzi Shore used to own oh, yeah. a number of businesses. So when she was going through cancer treatment, she sold a number of those businesses. So they gave me the contact for this one hotel. It was down the street, a couple blocks. And they looked after me. They're like, we don't have any rooms left, but we do have a servant quarter. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know, it's right across from the office. We're going to give you that. And they looked after me for, I think it was there like three weeks. Wow. And then... Uh, I get a phone call from the city and the police the next day because I'd already called them to complain. Jeez. And they're like, are you still at the Airbnb? I'm like, no, I've already left. And they're like, okay, good, because we're actually going in. We're raiding the property this morning. That means anyone that's in there, Damn. that's that's a defense. You can't be in a squatting yeah, an active crime scene property. I'm like, oh, shit. I was so happy that I left. Damn, that's some scary <laughs> shit. You got to watch these Airbnbs. Yeah. I had a similar experience. So I got booked in Hawaii 
like a oh, year yeah. and a half ago, maybe a year ago. So just before pandemic. Just It was kind of during, as things kind of, I had to have a show a negative COVID test to get there. I don't even remember oh, the dates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. it was in Maui and I booked the Airbnb and I was like, cool, let me find the cheapest way I can kind of get out there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to make a trip out of this. And my flight doesn't get there until like 12 midnight. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. My boy Chino, shout out to Chino, he picks me up from the airport and we get to the neighborhood that my Airbnb is. Oh, and it's no, pitch no. black dark. They don't have a lot of street lights in Hawaii. So I'm shining my cell phone light all over the house numbers. I get to the house number that I'm at and the living room light is on. It's like one o'clock in the morning. And there's just like this middle-aged white dude sitting on the couch like this, watching TV. No. But the TV's off. <laughs> <laughs> but the light's on in the house. And I'm outside with my light like, is this the right shit? Is this place? the right shit right here? So yeah, I uh, I ended up staying at Chino's because I was like, hey bro, let me get that air mattress. You was talking about a little earlier, let me just get the air mattress. Came back the next day and the house was empty and it was just the screen door was there. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then finally he shows up. He's like, oh yeah, bro, come on in. You're in that room over there. And I was like, oh. Oh, I got the room over there. It was, it was weird. It was a little weird. Yeah, like you don't want to put your stuff down. Yeah. You're not sure if you should sit anywhere because yeah. stuff might crawl on you. Yeah, and I was like, it's weird. Like I've lucked out. I've, I've been pretty <laughs> lucky. Usually when I'll book Airbnbs and stuff now, I always make sure I book with a second name so uh, they don't think I'm traveling by myself. Um, uh, that's a good idea. Because I even had, yeah, when I had weed delivered here, the guy was a really creepy when he dropped stuff off. I actually had to call the police. I'm like, what? yeah, I was like, I was like, you've got a dealer here that's dropping stuff off. That's, you know, he's kind of scouting the neighborhood to check if you've got young women, single women what? on their own. What so was I, this? Uh, it was at my Airbnb. Damn. I literally had stuff delivered and they charged me like an extra 10 bucks. So I messaged the guy right away and says, dude, not cool. You charged me an extra $10. And he's yeah. like, oh, I'm really sorry. I'll bring it back. And I'm like, you know, when you get that in the back of your mind, you're like, yep. no, I'm going to leave this alone. I was like, you know what, man? I said, tell you what. I said, you keep that. Go get yourself a drink after work. It's like, oh, I feel really bad. You know, let's, you know, I really want to make sure and make this up to you. What can I do? And I was like, tell you what, I says, if you really want to help me out, I says, I don't need cash. Don't come back. Right. I said, just follow my Instagram or something. You know, if when I've got shows or whatever, just kind of retweet and right. show me some love there. No, you know, you might be, you know, or I don't want to keep bothering you. Is your husband or your boyfriend home? And I'm like, have a good night. Wow. And he just kept messaging. Wow. So finally I called the police. And I'm like, hey, I says, this guy knows I'm here by myself. Mm. I'm. I literally am by myself. So I called the Airbnb owner. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I don't do this. I'm like, right. I'm here by myself. Right. I said, there's this guy that's been calling. I was like, he says, don't you even worry about it. We'll look after you. Nice. So I've been really lucky. Like wow. when I have been traveling, like I try to make sure I'm traveling in places that I know other people like right. you or Kelsey or Rob in town yeah. or tricks or something. And I try to let people know where I am. Yeah. So even every couple of days, I even call my parents. I'm like, this is where I'm staying. If I'll call you by Thursday. <laughs> yeah, message. Right. Right. And they'll call and be like, "We're Susan," so I yeah. make sure I always there's always For an sure. address somewhere of where I am. So, because I mean, I, I yeah, like it, it, this is a solitary profession. You're on the road by yourself all the time. Yeah, and you don't necessarily know what's going to happen or where they're putting you. Until you show up and you're like, "Oh, damn, yeah. this is yeah. not what we I signed up for." We just be out here, for. y'all. We just be out here. Yeah, because there's yeah. been a couple of clubs I show up at the condo and they're like, "Oh, you've got the condo and it's like an air mattress that's yeah. sitting on the floor and yeah. there's no other stuff in the apartment." Sheesh. You're just like. This is not. Yeah, this where is the good. This is the be. life. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is. Yeah, because the shows might be fantastic, and people are like, where are you staying after? You're like, well, right, actually, it's two I'm different on the floor. worlds. Yeah, yeah. Because this, yeah, the stuff you see on social media might be completely different than yeah. what's actually. They see the glam, the, 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 yeah. the beautiful side of the yeah. promo and the show and the lights. Yeah. And then, you know, the nice photos, but what we go through behind the scenes is, yeah. you know, it's well, sometimes it's shit. worse. Like, you finish a show and you have an amazing show. Everybody loves you. You're shaking hands after the show. You're like, this is going to be great. Yeah. You get back to that dilapidated Airbnb yeah. or condo, you're whatever it is they gave quick. you. Yeah. And then you're just like, well, I guess that was it. Yeah, I still got work to do. <laughs> yeah, I guess What's I'll next? keep hustling away. <laughs> I, guess I'll open, I guess I'll open up my email so right. I can book. Right. And, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm curious too, while I have you here, uh, since you've been booking, you've been producing, you've been performing, what do you want to do? You know what I mean? Like where, what is your ultimate, you know, goal? When do you feel like you'll be like living in your best moments? Like you know doing what? what throughout the days? It took, uh, it took me a long time to finally admit what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I think it actually took this trip to do it. Wow. Uh, when I was sitting, like I said, when I was sitting in that airport, I was in Phoenix for a week before this, I was featuring in House of Comedy and to see that they've decided to go another way and that I wasn't going to be working with them anymore. Mm-hmm. I was like, I get it. 
Mm. Like I wasn't, I was upset for a couple of days and I yeah. was like, you know what? I've got like, I called Jeremy right away and he's like, Susan, put your big girl pants on. You got yeah. this. You don't even worry about it. Yeah. So I'm picking up work with like Ron James and like, yeah, uh, Darren Frost, Kenny Robinson, um, Jeremy Hotz. And, like, yeah. and I'm like, I have to think about the stuff I've done in the last few months. Like yeah. I've opened with Shane Gillis and Mark Norman nice. and Doug Stanhope. And I'm like, man. I've done stuff. Yeah, man. We get caught up in things not going the way our plan was or what we wanted in those moments yeah losing the fact that you know everything kind of has a season and you're still being positioned yeah. you know we're getting caught up in our own details yeah. our own head but man things in assignments in seasons change yeah you know so the more you're like Definitely. water you know what I'm saying and work from a place of gratitude just keep flowing yeah you know yeah I mean? like I think the next while I'll probably uh I'll keep working in Canada I'll, I'll keep doing tours and stuff there okay. which is kind of nice I've got like two lives yeah now I get to be in the states um I would love to keep working with Laugh After Dark and stuff. I really yeah. love what they've been putting together because um, that's my wheelhouse. Like, I love industry and I love producing. And yeah. to see somebody like you, like, if I was able to produce, like, a comedy special or something like you yeah. and have that do well, to me, that's just as much of a high yeah. as getting off that stage going, I did it. That yeah. was a great show. Yeah. I love every single aspect of this business. Mm. And I think it takes a, a different kind of person to to see all those different avenues or appreciate it. Yeah. There's not just one job in this business. Yeah, that's true. You wear a lot of hats. Yeah. Especially when you're, you know, you think from an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset and you're working in the business end and the booking end and you're able to appreciate each angle. Yeah. You know, that kind of goes into it. That's why when you get to a nice show, you appreciate it on a whole new level because it's like, time. man, I know <clears throat> what goes go into well. this. Yeah. yeah. I think full time though, I would I would like to be here um, I would like to be working more in the States. I would like to do some work in Canada, of course, because I still have family there. Yeah. Like my parents are there. My kids are there. Okay. Um, but eventually I would like my daughter wants to go to school out this way, California nice, or Las Vegas. Nice. I was like, I think we can try and make that happen. Mama's got to make the money. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on the baby. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah, like, this is this. It's it's weird because I'm like, I know I'm going home tomorrow. Yeah. But this feels like home. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm finally in a place. I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. this is. Yeah, you know, you know, you you know. It's funny. The older you get, to you know, you have this this uh, this found appreciation for life and being around the right energy and the right people in the right place, mm -hmm. and you start to know what feels good to you. And yeah. when you see what feels good to you and where you feel like you can thrive on your best, it's like this is kind of it. Yeah. You start to be more aware of those things. Yeah. You know, like at some point, I would, I would love. I've always wanted to like own my own club, but like, uh -huh. like booking, development, managing, like being there and actually working with those comics, building those comics, nice. watching them move on and watching them progress. See, I think you just spoke it into I, existence. So that's, yeah. that, that could be down the line I right there. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> like probably my favorite club here in, in uh, Vegas is the LA Comedy Club. I yeah. love that room. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm, if I'm in town, I make, I think I've been down there quietly. I don't always announce that I'm there. Yeah. I've been there four times in the last wow. week. Wow. Because it's someplace I want to be. I've been down at Notoriety watching Laugh After Dark. I went yeah. down to watch The Dirty. Yeah. I was going to go down to the second Friday and watch The Dirty again. And I ended nice. up in the hospital because I decided to eat nuts oh, shit. on my pizza and wound up in the hospital. I'm like, I got insurance. What kind I'm of good. nuts was on this pizza? It was walnut pesto. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, walnut. I like a good pesto pizza, though. Oh, but I've never had walnut pesto. It's no, I didn't even realize. I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, they're, me neither. They're like, oh, yeah. sorry, we put walnut pesto on that. I'm like, why would you ruin a right, pizza with that? Right, I'm like, right, the right. pizza should be sauce, <laughs> cheese, pepperoni, right. you know, the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't be fancy. They're trying to get creative. That's this new, yeah, no. that newfound shit where they have to try to updo everything. No. You know mm -hmm. I mean? I'm very basic when it comes <laughs> to my pizza. Do it right and do it well. That's it. Do not do not fuck up my pizza yeah, yeah. and change it. And they did. And they were like, oh, I guess we're going to have to take you to Sunnyside Center. I'm like. You're gonna have to take Damn. me in. So Damn. yeah, they gave me two shots of that of epinephrine on Friday night. Damn. So I was hiring a kite Friday night, just sitting there and I'm like, I should paint this house. This yeah. great. I'm inspired. Yeah, I, I was inspired. Shit. I get to write some stuff. I can see yeah. color. I can see everything. I can see wow. my own feelings. So they they sent me home and then Saturday morning got up and just did my own thing, kind of relaxed for the day, and then eventually came to laugh after dark and stuff. And that's like, that's oh, a good call. A good it's day. a good call. It was a good day. <laughs> it was a great day. Speaking of food, I'm a big foodie, so whenever oh, I go somewhere I want to eat out, yeah. what kind of food should I look forward to? Or do I need to tap into? Because whenever I get booked in Canada, mm -hmm. which I'm speaking to existence too, so I'm going to get get out there soon. Where, where oh, do we yeah. have to go eat? Where, where do we have to go? You what have kind of have... food? Is there a specific type of cuisine? Oh, yeah. Type of place? What, what? Gotta have, well, if you're going to be in Vancouver, fish for sure. We got to take you someplace like fish. right on the water. Like you, There's a couple places right on the water, whereas whatever you order, like clams or mm. mussels, all that, yeah. literally you can watch them catching it. What? So you got to take you there for sure. Nice. 
got to take you for like um, some type of a like a seafood dinner. Yeah, for sure. We love seafood. I'm from Louisiana. But, it's different oh, types yeah. of seas different. we get. In our yeah, you guys have yeah. more like crawfish and oh, shellfish yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whereas ours is more like salmon and right. trout, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, we have to have to have to do that for sure. Okay. And then let's see what else. Uh, maple syrup. You're gonna have to try it. Like mm. the good stuff. Mm. And poutine. Poutine. Oh yeah. What's what's poutine, girl? Oh. I want some Canadian poutine. Oh yeah. So you got like poutine. really good fries. What is that? <laughs> good fries with cheese curds. So it's uh, it's it's a classic Canadian dish originally okay. out of Quebec or Montreal. Yep. So it's yeah, it's uh, fries with cheese curds and gravy. Mm. And of course they mix them up now. They do like a curry. They do like an Italian version and everything wow. else. But nice. one of the best ones is, it's uh. You got the fries, of course, just perfectly salted. Yeah. Uh, the cheese curds, and then they throw in some natural maple syrup, like the real stuff. What? So you got the, the salty fries? and the sweet. Oh Ooh, yeah. Throw that throw that gravy now. on top there. Oh, okay. But you need to make it like if once you have that, you need to make sure you're gonna head home for the night because you'll be tired. Yeah, it sounds like, like I it. need I need my bed. We call that the itis out here mm -hmm. now. You got the itis, it's time to go lay it out somewhere. Yeah, and then you got, well then you got a ton of the craft breweries too. So I mean you've got yeah. your poutine, you've got some really good craft brewery. Yeah. And you're sitting out by the water. Wow. And just enjoy the sunset. Cause we, like the summers for us are like a blip. Summer mm. for us starts around June, we'll get less, a little less rain because we're tempered climate, so a lot of rain. Yeah. So it gets nice around June. You got your July and August kind of nice. And yeah. September starts to go downhill again. Gotcha. With Mostly the cold rain. shit. I don't want to come with the cold shit and no. all that either. Nah. Uh-uh. I'm nice. not. I'm not about the cold. Yeah, no. Just, it doesn't work. I live, when I lived in New York, I was just like every winter that went, yeah, I was so like, this is know. the last one. Yeah. This is the last one. You know, yeah. Like I'm originally from Toronto, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, yeah. this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You wake up and it's sunny, but you're still freezing cold and snowing. Right. You're like, Ugh. right. But at least in Vancouver, we don't have to shovel it. Right. So, so I gotta ask. I gotta ask. What's your favorite food? Like if you had to eat one food, pizza. Like this, pizza. Okay. Pizza. No, thing, no hesitation. Oh yeah, no hesitation. Gotcha. No, no. Gotcha. I'm a cheap date. You take me for a McDonald's, or you take me for McDonald's or pizza, or to a movie. Wow. I'm in. There it I'm is, y'all. I'm in. You heard it right there. <laughs> you can keep your money in the bank account. You go about thirty five dollars. You know what I'm saying? She's a good date. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> I love all that. Like I'm such a. It's funny, like I'm gotcha. such a cheap date. They're like, well, why don't we go for pizza or McDonald's? I'm like, I think right. I love you. Right. Marry me? I'm like, marry me. I need you. Never happening again. Ever. Never. Right. Right. <laughs> Never right. again. Right. No. So I got to know too. Now you signed, uh, we're speaking this into existence, right? So you signed a multi million dollar deal, right? You're paid. You got a nice check. What's the first car you're going to go out and buy? Audi R8. Woo! Oh, yeah. No hesitation. Mm -mm. That's a badass no. car. No. I owned an automotive one. shop for years. I know my oh, cars. So I love you know. cars. Like 71 Dodge Darts and <laughs> nice. uh, Roadrunners, 70 yeah. Roadrunners. Yeah. Like, I love, I, nice. I just, I know what cars are like. I don't necessarily know everything about them. I don't necessarily know all the engines, but yeah. the R8. Oh, yeah, that's so beautiful. It's a gorgeous yeah, car. Yeah, get like a matte black or something like on that car. Oh, or, oh. or white looks Or the wrap. Like yeah. You've seen like the charcoal, that charcoal wrap they yeah. do with it now? Mm. Looks yeah. good with those really nice, the aluminum alloys. Hell yeah. Looks so good. With I the, can with see the, you on that too. Yeah, I can with see the, you with the interior here, it's got the red. Yeah. Not the blue, I want the red. Right. With a little bit of the red trimmer on those leather yeah. seats. That's what I want. Nice. That's what I want. We spoke that shit into existence. I, I love it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm an Audi fan too. They make good cars. Are you really? I was in the Range Rover business for a while. I sold my yeah, Mirage yeah. briefly and shit, so I've been around a lot of... A lot of cool shit, but it's on the sales side. Yeah, you know. So, it was... but still, you get someone that comes in though, and it's like I can sell because a lot of the because I worked for Acura for years. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. they'd be like, "You're never gonna sell that car." And you're like, "Watch." <laughs> that was the high. It's a similar high in like the the comedy world. Whenever you can turn an audience around yeah. and they're on your side and they love you, that was the same high I got in the car business because people yeah, hated yeah. coming to dealerships. Like, oh my god, because you know they're gonna go. have to, they're like, I know I'm gonna give you money, and yeah. then you're gonna sell them on. The, uh, my favorite is the undercoating. I'm like, it comes factory. Don't be buying that shit from yeah, the inside of the yeah, dealership. Yeah. So, the, yeah, they keep trying to sell you more stuff. But Because you're on the bodywork side of things, right? I, I know. It was uh, automotive. Like and a mechanic then, shop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool, yeah. Cool, cool. So we're still the largest. Well, his shop is still one of the largest independent shops in British Columbia. Wow. Okay. Um, so they work on, like, boats, high-end vehicles. Nice. Um, my son, actually, 19 years old, going to be 20 in December. He's actually one of the most in-demand mechanics in British Columbia because wow. he does high-end conversions. Wow. So if you can't find parts, he makes the parts. What? He'll either make them out of other stuff or he'll um out of what is it laser printers wow what's his name his son. miles hansen shout out to miles man. miles hansen miles. keep shining milo out milo 9598 i think is him yeah nice. so he's got he's got some 
I don't have to worry about him. Nice. He's one of those kids. I'm like, yeah, he's going to be okay. He was born an old oh, man. Oh, that's dope. My daughter's more an artist. So yeah. she's very much like me. I'm like, oh, shit, the kid's going to have problems. She's like me. <laughs> right. She's a creative. So, I know. Yeah. She's a, yeah. So I lucked out. They, they're very good kids. Nice. Um, I can still travel for work. Yeah. And I'm excited to go home tomorrow. But I know I'm home for like a week. And then... I start, yeah, I've got a couple of shows You're in Vancouver. You're about to go on the road too, right? Yeah, well, I'll do, I'll do a couple of shows in Vancouver, and then Trix is in town, so I'm in town for like a day or two. And then, yeah, yeah I've got shows with Jeremy. I think I'm in like, I didn't even realize, I'm like Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Damn. Saskatoon, yeah. and then I'm home for a couple of days, oh, and then dope. it goes back on tour again, and then I'm in like, Dartmouth, like Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So I'm all over the place. Wow. It's, so it's, See, comics it's too, like right what she just named, like all of these places that aren't on a lot of our even radar <laughs> in terms of where we can perform, what we can do. We're initially thinking, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, LA and, you know, uh, New York. And those are great. But man, the the, the, the sky is literally the limit. Yeah. And where it's you can different. go with like, stuff. Yeah, like Canada, I mean, we're pretty spread out. We're one of the largest uh, largest countries, but it's it's very spread out. Yeah. So you might have your metropolitan areas where you're going to have like Yuck Yucks and Comedy Mix and... Uh, house of comedy and stuff, but then a lot of your shows are going to be interior wise. So you're driving through large areas that wow. are uninhabitable, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of nowhere. You're like, oh shit, There's this this here. this town <laughs> has a 1500 foot or wow. a 1500 person venue, just because they've got a massive arts community, and it's wow. like that's their place to kind of gather and wow. hang out. So like this entire tour with Jeremy, like these aren't small events, like these are large like casinos and wow. theaters. So this is going to be different than yeah, working those clubs of like two three hundred. Hell yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna be a different vibe. So we'll man, see how it goes. That's awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it too, man. I'm so excited to stretch myself yeah. and stretch the brand. And you know, there's so many places that I that I'm looking forward to tapping into, Canada being one of them. Yeah, so. oh yeah. Oh it's nice. a it's a beautiful country to visit for sure. So we you know you know you know we'll be in touch. Yeah, we'll be in sure. touch. I'm gonna call you if I go anywhere and be like Susan, they I'm invited like, me to the strip club in like, Canada. Is I'll that like, a good Charlie, idea or a bad idea? I got you, Charlie. I got you, I got you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Don't do that. I don't eat this. I leave that alone. Don't go to that neighborhood, Charlie. Don't go over there. So I would love I would love there's some comics though like that are here. Like I would love to build like a yeah, like a five or six city tour or something. Mm. And just Boom. and like have like a continuous mix, be like, all right, you're doing the first six yeah. leg of this tour, like maybe and then bring someone else in for the next yeah. six leg of the tour. Like, yeah. That ain't nothing but a thing, girl. Ain't nothing but some dates. Yeah, you know like it's, it's a beautiful country. I mean, <laughs> it's different. I mean, now that we've been through pandemic, I think you guys have probably seen more of the news than we did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Your, yeah. your news told us more. I'd be getting phone calls like, are you all right there in Canada? I'm like, right. I think I'm okay. Right. But I'm not sure. Right. I'm not allowed to say anything, am I? Yeah. So it's, it's it's been different. It's been, but there's like, We've always said there's opportunities no matter where you look, you just have to find them, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's sometimes the dream system. changes. You don't get rid of the dream, but the dream changes. Yeah, yeah. It's so. constantly like kind of like an art sculpture. It's constantly being yeah. broken down and shifted and crafted, man. Don't stop building or working. Yeah. Just know that your masterpiece is going to be constant. Mm -hmm. I think for the rest of our lives as artists, it's going to be constantly chipping away. So yeah, you just yeah. got to relax and enjoy your, the process oh, yeah. and just chill <laughs> while you're doing the thing. So. But at the same time, I will never buy really good bed linens ever again because it's encouraged me never to get up, especially the heated blanket. Oh, I'm like, yeah. I'm not getting out of you're bed. You're going to be stuck. If Susan cancels a show or a meeting or something, <laughs> you know, it's because it's her new bed you know. and her new sheets are keeping her tied in. I'll be like, sorry, I can't come up <laughs> What are you doing? Susan, are you in sweatpants? Maybe. See? Maybe? Yeah. What are you eating? What's over there? What kind of snacks you are got you eating chips? Are you, are you licking Are you Doritos? sucking the Doritos again? <laughs> Put the chips down, Susan. <laughs> girl, it's been such a pleasure. I'm so glad we were able to sit That's down so, and get to talk, you girl. Thank you so much. You're so awesome. This and I want so nothing but the best for you. You um, guys, too. I love I love this town. Yes. Yeah. So please let them know where they can keep up with you and follow you and see uh, more of yourself. You can uh, find me at um, susanthompson.net. I think all my shows are listed there. And then with Jeremy's show, you can find us at jeremyhots.com. And the rank and vile, I think you can reach us at rankinvile.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just see keep up on uh, Instagram's probably my favorite thing to do. So Susan Thompson, haha, -ha, please follow me. I would love to see some of you guys. Like I love interacting with people. So yeah. that's a big deal to me. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shake and bake, y'all. Shake and bake, man. I love it. <laughs> Fellas, $35 date right here. Get us some oh, pesto yeah. pasta. Hold the walnuts. <laughs> I've been your boy, Charlie Wilson. It's another episode of Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I'll see y'all next time. It's Susan Thompson, y'all. Cheers, baby girl. You oh, ain't even yeah, drunk on your shit up. That's all right. All. That's all right. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, hey. I know you got stuff to do, and you're ready to get up out of here, but just a minute. Come on, man. You didn't already stay here this long. Now take just a minute and subscribe, please. That way you can stay connected. Like the video. Leave a comment.
We want to hear what you got to say, baby. <laughs> now, we appreciate it. Now, go on and subscribe.